America. Chevrolet. All right, if you have a fourth generation, 1988 to 98 Chevrolet pickup truck, this is going to show you the common problems with that. If you have any problems that aren't in this video, you can put them in the comments. This is mostly a guide for somebody who just got one of these trucks and just wants to know what to look out for. Or if you are thinking of buying one of these, this is what to look out for. Great trucks overall. There's just a few little problems. I know also you Ford guys in your uncle's cabin in Gatlinburg are going to be writing nasty comments about how Fords are better. So I welcome that too. Let's see what kind of anti-Chevy stuff you can put in the comments. So anyway, let's get started. So the body is galvanized during this generation, which means that you're not going to get rust holes in it, which is good. But the bad thing is, especially the earlier ones, closer to 88, you're going to get paint peeling. The paint's going to peel off just in chunks. Like you can see, it's just, uh, it's just cracking and coming off like that. This one is actually, it's just got a couple of bad spots there on the hood, but on some of them, I've seen the whole body go and that's kind of hard to, to paint over. In my case, you can see, I just have a can of spray paint that matches the color and I just spray it. It's an old truck, so I don't really care. On the interior, crocodile alligator, the, the headliners have a cloth covering over foam and those tend to sag down and hit you in the head. So you either have to buy a new one or in my case, I just peeled all the cloth off and painted the foam gray and it, it blends in well enough. And the GM vehicles of this era have anti-lock brakes, a lot of them, and they just, they're not very easy to keep working. So your anti-lock brake light will most likely be on if you buy one of these trucks. And the good news is GM knew that they weren't very good at making anti-lock brakes. So regular brakes work just fine when the anti-lock functionality is gone. So it stops fine. It just locks them up when you slam on the brakes. And most likely it's a wheel sensor that needs to be replaced. I just haven't bothered to deal with it, but that's a pretty common problem on these. Uh, the air conditioning on these tends to stop working at some point and I found that and, and I've read online that a lot of times it's your control panel so this thing these switches have a computer brain behind them and I bought this for I think 100 120 bucks on Amazon and plugged it in and my my stuff started working again after that so most likely if you have no air conditioning it's this and you just pop the dashboard loose and stick a new one in on the earlier models, this one's a 95 and the door handle is reasonably strong, but it's still kind of flimsy pot metal. So these tend to break, especially if you have one closer to 1988. Um, window motors also tend to go out. I had to replace two of them on my 91 van. Again, this, I think they might have improved it as you get into the mid 90s, but the early ones, your window motors are going to be a problem that sooner or later. Well, the fuel pump tends to go bad around 100,000 miles and it is on top of the gas tank. So you have to drop your gas tank down to replace it. I would recommend if you've got one of these, that's got over a hundred thousand miles on it and you don't know if it's ever been replaced would be to proactively replace it rather than getting stranded in the middle of the woods somewhere. And these early generation plastic headlights get hazy too. So you either want to polish them with some baking soda and toothpaste or a polishing kit, or you can buy some fast and furious, cool Vin Diesel replacements at AutoZone or eBay if you want to go fancy pants. And while the body is galvanized and protected from rust, you can see the body's looking pretty good under here, but the frame is still going to rust. Uh, the good news is it's made out of pretty thick stuff, and I've painted over some of it with rust primer to kind of slow it down, but you definitely want to check for body rust and, and get under it and, and paint it if you buy an old one of these, just to make it last a few more years. Under the hood, this is big 350 V8 American Classic. They made a kajillion of these motors, and so if you know 350 V8s, you know the common problems. Uh, this generation had an EGR valve in it for emissions purposes, and if those get stuck open, then you're going to have crappy running and, and uh, like hesitation on idle and stuff like that. So the EGR valve is something to check if it starts running crappy. It's an easy one. You can take it off and clean it out and then put it back on. It doesn't cost you any money, and the, the gasket is usually able to be reused. Um, down on the bottom, rear main seal leaks happen on these engines. You can see it's a bit oily down here, so your rear main seal might start dripping. It's it's one of those deals where it just marks its spot. It's like a Harley, but you don't really suffer much oil loss because it's such a slow leak, but just the back of the engine starts to drip well. And then the other thing that happens on these engines as they age is sometimes they'll smoke on startup. They'll just blow a, a ton of smoke out the back because oil will, will seep in through the head and get into the cylinders. But it only happens sometimes, and after a minute, the smoke is gone, and it doesn't do any damage. It'll run forever like that. It's just kind of embarrassing when people see it happen, especially the Ford guys. 
And that's about it. The good news about this generation of truck is that this engine's from the, what, 1950s or earlier? So they've been making this engine for decades by the time that this truck came out. And really, they've been making these trucks for decades. They hadn't changed them much. So the, no problems with the transmission. It's just going to run forever, the old automatic. And same with the transfer case. It's just going to work forever. It's a really a basic vehicle that's still relatively primitive. Everything that you need to fix on it is cheap. Parts are cheap. They're easy to get. You can get them at any, uh, any auto parts store. And that pretty much sums it up. A affordable decent used vehicle that's pretty simple to fix easy to keep on the road and doesn't really have too many problems uh, i paid three thousand two hundred dollars for this one in 2015 so that's a, a guideline this is the z71 four-wheel drive model you can get a two-wheel drive model for around two grand i think or 2500 uh, if you do that make sure you get the g80 rear locking differential so that you have both wheels spinning when you go in the dirt and it'll, it'll do pretty well in the dirt um, gas mileage on this one you're getting like 11 or 12 in the city getting closer to 15 on the highway but uh, it's just a big heavy primitive thing and actually that's not much worse than a new truck gets unless you get one of those with the little tiny turbo eco boosty type of engines but uh, great overall truck and uh, hope you enjoy it if you get one of these and I hope this video helps you out thanks for watching